All right, well, today's price action was just about all over the place, throwing a lot of red flags up in the air for me, particularly the, the market digested the CPI data. We ended up you know, rallying pre-market and then immediately pretty much selling off on the open. And then right around 11 a.m., that's when we started to rally back. And, you know, the S&P 500 made it to its all-time high, but we didn't see that with all the indices. So in today's video, we're going to quickly go over some of the things that I'm paying very close attention to. Um, perhaps that we, perhaps the market will press a little bit higher here, but these divergences that I'm seeing build, they, they're important and they're, they're not resolving themselves. Now, they can diverge for quite some time before they either, one, resolve themselves or have an effect on the market. We got a lot to go over in a little bit of time. Let's hop into today's episode. All right, everybody, welcome back. We're looking at a chart of the CPI. And what I did here was I overlaid a rate of change of 12. This is monthly time frame, And I'm really just showing you this because if you pay attention here to the right-hand side of the screen, just look at the rate of change here in 2021. It's almost completely vertical uh, as these consumer price index, as the reports are coming out uh, higher than expected. And I'm trying to like look back to see if we've ever seen a vertical move. And really the only vertical moves that I can see on this chart dating back many, many years into the 70s, you can see here we had some pretty gnarly spikes. And that was during a stagflationary, stagflationary period in the 70s. Now, is that going to be the case here? Well, many economists are saying that yes, we're probably going to be walking into more of a stagflation where we get recessionary and an inflationary um, economy, but we'll we'll see how that plays out. I just wanted to call this out because I mean it's just incredible how fast that rate of change is um, just moving almost completely vertical there. The S and P 500 reached its all time high. It didn't close on the high. It's overall in bullish context. This though, when you zoom in, tells a little bit different of a picture. You can see that gap up, and then we just completely rolled itself over. Look where we ended up right at the five day inclining moving average, and then we bounced from those levels. Uh, so it's just a lot of wacky price action overall. Still bullish context, but I will be getting into the divergence charts here um, shortly because these red flags, it, it really does put people on the defense, um, it, it, myself included. The VIX, this is what I find very interesting here. The VIX was down 10%. So that's a complete crush right there. That's a big down day. Meanwhile, the market barely eked out like a, a hand, it was a handle, you know, like a, a, for an all-time high. So down 10% in the VIX, the, the S&P 500 barely made it to an all-time high on weak volume, mind you, on top of all of that. So it's just, it's just interesting. Now we have these four open gaps above us. That remains the risk factor there. And we have this previous area at 16 that could act as potentially as a level of support. Keep in mind also, going in tomorrow, tomorrow is that VIX Crush Friday. You know, everyone talks about VIX Crush Friday. It doesn't mean that that has to happen. All right. So you just got to be defensive. Um, and then going into next week, we obviously have some stuff going on too, um, including the Fed meeting. Uh, the divergence here on the percent of stocks above the 50 day moving average continues to build. I'm not going to, I talk about this one often, so I'm not going to drag that on. The NIMO, the breath, horrible, right? It was meh. It, it was not that great. Um, meanwhile, the S&P 500 reached its all-time high, so that divergence there is still building. Uh, the BPSPX chart, we actually went down. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 went up. Interesting. This divergence continuing to build, and actually, as the S&P 500 reached an all-time high, technically, this divergence can go back to earlier May and draw a line from here to up here. Meanwhile, right here can be um, drawn from uh, this peak to this a low right over here. So the divergence is actually quite big. It's over a month big here on this ratio. Now, this is where things get interesting. How did the bond market respond? Well, we broke out of this bottoming pattern and we started heading higher. Now, this looks bullish in a bearish trend. However, notice the RSI right here. It's getting to that overbought area. Okay, so I don't necessarily know if this is going to be good for treasury bonds. Now, you know what really liked this move? Tech really like this move, but if I zoom out of the TLH, look at this. It could be potentially a bear flag as we're reaching the upper end of this channel and getting overbought here. This could actually present itself as a potential short opportunity um, by looking at it uh, through this lens. Now, the TNX also pretty big down day, down 2%. We're below that 100-day moving average. It's outside of this little channel. 
Okay, this really benefited, like I said, tech. Tech um, had had a pretty darn great day. We'll get into the cues here momentarily, but let's look at it zoomed out. This could be potentially a flag. All right, now it's not oversold by any means, but just, just notice how this, you know, it's a pretty bullish looking structure. Perhaps, perhaps we start breaking out of this. That would be pretty insane if that was the case. Um, the price percent oscillator says that, you know, that's probably not gonna happen right away here. Um, another, uh, uh, sector that does not like it when the yields are going down is obviously the banks and the banks got completely crushed today. You can look at the XLF or the BKX. Just check this out. Okay. We were looking at, um, this gap yesterday and just, just look at where it gapped, it, it gapped up and ran all the way, closed the gap. I left it here just to show you perfectly touched it, closed that gap and then immediately sold off completely just it's like it jumped off of a cliff here, just completely to the downside. Now, this is getting overextended to the downside, okay? Now, that could get resolved by a big gap up, and then we completely head back down, very similar to what we saw when this was here, um, and then we moved up, and then we re resolved itself. So, And then also, if I zoomed out, I don't have that chart, but we are coming into a previous area of support as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of bounce in the financials tomorrow. I would be very shocked to see if we don't see a bounce, actually. I, I mean, it wouldn't be shocking to see a gap up and then roll over. But if we get a gap down, I have a strong feeling that there's going to be buyers there ready to go um, at that particular point in time. Meanwhile, the dollar didn't do much today. Uh, just slightly down. Nothing. Really nothing. Okay, so it's still positive on the year. Really just tracking sideways. Gold. Pretty much nothing on the day two, right? So at the beginning, yeah, we saw that sell off. It looked pretty bearish, but then it, you know, caught a bid, moved right back up. Uh, it's a little bit of a hanging man candle here. This consolidation, uh, you know, it's it's anybody's game right here. I can see how the bears can take it, take advantage of this to potentially knock it down. But as it stands, we're just kind of trading sideways right here in the price of gold. Meanwhile, lumber down 3.61%, which now takes the lumber to gold ratio currently at 17.37. We haven't seen it at that level for quite some time. Looking back to the left of the chart, heading towards that zero marker, I do plan on bringing Michael Guyad on the show so he can talk uh, to us about what is going on in the overall markets here. Meanwhile, the cues on the 15 minute time frame. I just wanted to call out, we reached this high point right here on this chart on a negative divergence. You could call this a rising wedge right here too as well. But on from a good note, the five-day moving average is inclining. That's you know solid right there. And the price is above it. Meanwhile, the daily time frame, this is where things could get iffy. If we if we start seeing this turn around tomorrow, that's not going to be the greatest sign, in my opinion. If that is the case, I think that's going to be a lower um, high than here. Now, the, this price action makes me think that this wants to go take this high out or at least go try to reach that all-time high. And then we could probably see some resistance right at that upper trend line there as well. Um, the IWM, the small caps did not do good as, a, at all here. And a lot of speculative stocks, I'm in a couple speculative names. All I do when I take speculative names is I reduce my position size greatly um, because they move, you know, a lot faster than most stocks. And you know, you can you you can use that as leverage technically and just reduce your overall position size. Well, we ran into this previous high right up here. This could be potentially a double top. It would need to be confirmed, obviously. But we did see some selling today. And if I zoom in on the 15 minute time frame, it just looks like it looks pretty bad overall. We have an inclining five day moving average, but the price action did close below it. That's fine. But if we get another daily close or maybe uh, two more daily closes below that, that's not going to be the greatest sign for the small caps. Um, let's go into the industrials. Also, look at this huge move to the upside, ran up higher, and then just completely dumped. Okay, what do they call this? They call it a gap in crap. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube or a um, jump and dump or a, a fly and cry or a bunch of other names. I, I Anything that rhymes, I guess. But you can see here, it looks like it wants to start taking out this 344 um, and 80 cents. The the five day moving average is starting to decline here. So the more we stay down here, it is not a good sign. And also on top of all of that, the transports are getting obliterated. And that's also diverging from the overall markets. And this is very important to watch. These divergences can take a long time to play out, but 
like we said on the previous episodes, even on the quarterly time frame, we're trading at these crazy, crazy levels. We're outside of the upper Bollinger Bands, disconnected from the 5 EMA on quarterly time frames, and we're coming into quarter end here at the end of June. Uh, one thing that is somewhat positive is we have a positive divergence right here. We'll see if that does anything. A high to a lower high where we have a low to a lower low right here. So perhaps we get a little bit of a bounce, but still that's uh, on a declining five-day moving average that can act as a level of resistance. Also to note too as well, this chart may look familiar to some that have been here. This is the Dow Jones composite up here and the three things that make up. We have industrials, transports, and utilities. And you have to see these move hand in hand. And if they diverge over a course of time, that's not a good sign. So the last time I looked at this chart, we were seeing utilities diverging from the other um, from industrials and transports here and now we're starting to see that resolve itself by utilities heading higher and industrial uh, sorry transports heading lower and industrials kind of flatlining right there meanwhile if we bring up the xlu this looks just like a beautiful flag pattern still hasn't broke out definitely want to wait for confirmation on something like that price percent oscillator is curling itself over this looks bullish to me so we'll see you know we'll see if it wants to just get rejected right here if it wants to really break out if it wants to be a, a bull trap we'll see what it happens when the time comes um but yeah it's it's looking it's looking overall pretty good right now all right everybody just to kind of clear up thoughts, um, wrap everything into a little bow. First off, I, uh, me personally, I got on about now four, four to, f I think just four or five now full size swing, uh, four, I think it's four, four full size swing positions. I have a couple speculative uh, swing positions with greatly, greatly reduced, um, uh, I guess, percent of my portfolio. So, so they're very, very small. Even if they were to drop 50%, my portfolio wouldn't even drop 1%. That's how small they are, to be quite honest, because I'm just looking to see if we get some crazy squeeze out of them. But this is what I am doing. I'm playing, I, this is getting to the point where I'm a little bit more defensive. Um, I'm playing a little bit more defensive. So if we get moves to the upside, I plan on selling at, at, at the moves to the upside and then looking for some sort of, short-term correction now i'm already playing defensive by having you know mostly in i'm mostly in cash probably about i'd say you know 60 percent yeah 60 percent in cash 40 percent in play and i'm playing things like copper i'm playing things like steel i'm playing things like industrial area era, oh no no i just got out of that one i do have another industrial name and then i have a semiconductor name as well and then i have a couple speculative names if the small caps want to reverse and they want to start heading higher or start to squeeze so that's how i'm playing the market as of right now i have a, a large amount of uh not a lot um, i have a, a large percentage uh, of my portfolio in cash and then i'm playing in some names that have been doing very well in various sectors um, so yes that's all i got for you on today's episode everybody have a wonderful day